Hello everyone, Nadlabs here. Today we're going to be making this nuclear throne map generation tool. Um, as you can see, we can get a lot of crazy varieties. And of course, uh, throughout the video, I'll be showcasing some tweaks that you can make to this program to make um, more insane maps. Um, and basically what I was inspired by was this game called Nuclear Throne. I'll show a couple of clips here. Basically, you can see that we're generating very similar maps uh, to the game. If I ha know how to use my editing tool, I'll show them side by side somehow, maybe overlay them, I don't know. But you can see over here that we're generating maps and you can see that this is instantaneous. If I just go to monitors real quick, you can see that it's not that taxing on the system. I, um, of course, there's a little bit of a uh, like spike over here at the beginning of the game, but when we're generating maps like constantly all the time, it's not that bad. And these can be saved elsewhere for later. Oh my God, that was a face. <gasps> Looks like an elephant. Uh, but as you can see, um, I'm getting sidetracked a bit, but we can make this and it will be instantaneous spawning all the time. With a couple of tweaks, which aren't that hard to make, you can even change the tile set to whatever you want. And if you really wanted to, you could add a player uh, player to your world. Uh, just drag it into the middle. Da, da. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could add a player and then you could uh, walk around. That's not that big of an issue. I didn't change the code. In fact, I, I did change the code. All I did was change what tiles the game was using or the program was using. But as you can see, we get very similar results. I, am, I think this looks pretty cool. It's a pretty neat idea. Um, let's get right into making it. Now, before we do, oops, I have one thing to say you might be wondering why am i making this video uh, the reason and when i've already done map generation uh over here and i've done a random walker because essentially what we're doing is building a random walker but what i haven't done is in both of these uh diff in both of these videos in this uh, vein like map generation and in the other one which was the uh, random walker we used a physical object to generate the map there was a physical object like uh uh, a kinematic body or an area or a node that was walking around that's not practical in a real game because you don't have time for a stupid thing or you don't have time for an object to go around like this or uh, and actually generate the entire map we have to do that instantaneously and i guess i could make a tutorial about it because i haven't really seen something about it wow enough rambling let's get started okay so i'm actually going to do something new i'm actually going to be making a new project in version 3.4.4 stable and uh yeah let's get right into it so what do we do mm. Uh, so how do we start this project? Well, we can make our world. Uh, da -da. We can make our world, save it into a, a scene. Uh, we need assets. I'm just going to grab some assets real quick. To make these images, I don't think I need to explain this, but you can just go to paint and click resize and change the pixel value and then uh, control S save, save it to wherever you want. And you can make these just paint it black for black. But what are we going to do? Okay, so we need a tile map, obviously. So tile map. Uh, what are the cell size? Well, we're going to be doing 16 by 16. You can do any tile size you want. It does not make a difference. Uh, just be aware of what your tile size is because I'm going to be doing my own type of tile size. So over here we have our uh, tile. Um, and this is something about Godot 3 right now. You have to kind of place the tile and then change its snap size and then go back and fix it. So you can get something like that. And then over here, we just click new single tile and there we go. So what do we have? We have zero as a uh, wall, I guess, and then white one as a uh, floor. Okay, uh, what do we do now? Well, let's go to paint. What do we want to do? Well, we have our map, okay? Uh, da -da. We have our map, okay? Let's say this is our game scene. And we want a random walker to generate a map because uh, essentially what we want is something like this, right? But we want it to be placed a lot. We want it to be placed all over the map. So we get something, or if I just increase my brush size, I guess, uh, and zoom in. What we want is something to go like this across the map and actually generate a space for us to play in. Like maybe go like that, generate a couple rooms, maybe loop around somehow randomly if it wants to. And we want to generate something where the player can walk around in. So if that was a player, it could like go over here, you know, walk around, um, something like that. But the issue is in my two tutorials that I've done so far, we always had something like a physical object. Uh, and I say physical object, I mean an actual node in the scene that would go around and generate and actually physically move and place tiles underneath it so it would just it would keep going around and setting tiles on the tile map to white and then eventually we would get rid of the blue and then we would be left with uh the path that the object walked on but we can't do this in a game because that's a little bit intensive and a little bit not practical so we have to think a little bit theoretical what is the random walker doing well what is the random walker doing let's think about it well the random walker is moving to random spots on the map Ran um like it's it's just moving around so what's stopping us from saving this um, pattern in an array like there's nothing stopping us from saving a bunch of directions in an array and then just using a variable like a a, a, um, a vector two right uh, a hypothetical vector two and then just continuously um 
moving the vector to, and then we can just use a set cell function, which is part of the tile map, right? If this is the, if this white box over here represents our tile map, we can just place down white tiles. We can just place down white tiles from where this vector two is um, technically inside of our, um, inside of our script. That's a little bit confusing. I, I think it will make more sense when we actually code it out. So let's get to that. So what do we need? Well, we're going to start off with a node called, we could just call the main node walker head um, because we want to obviously control and have a bunch of little walkers when we're programming our thing. So we're just going to create a new script called walker head. So if we have walker head, we're going to have to have walker, like a, a, another walker. So we're going to make a new scene and we're just going to call it, we're just going to call it walker unit. Okay. Why walker unit? Because um, if you think about it, walker head over here is going to be placing down, uh, or it's going to be holding all of our walker units like this. Uh, so we can have a bunch of them. Essentially, that's what I'm trying to say. So what can we do? Okay, so what on walker unit, we can make a script. And what are we going to think about? Well, uh, for one thing, I want to actually just place this into the center. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be in the center center, just somewhere generally in the center. And what I want walker unit to do is I want walker unit to be a child of walker head. So uh, because if you think about it, what we're trying to do is if I go back to paint for real quick, is that we have walker head over here. I'll just uh, restart the diagram uh, to make it a bit easier to understand. So let's say we have our box. This is our tile map and we have walker head. Okay. Walker head is over here. Walker head has a bunch of children called walker units and these walker units, they can be placed anywhere. I would recommend placing them all in the center or at least in a spawn location for your player. If you're placing a player and what we're going to be saying to each walker unit is okay. Walker unit inside of your system, like inside of your script, can you like come up with an imaginary path? So I'm just going to make an imaginary path. So this walker unit over here, this walker unit, it's just a node, a dimensionalist node, doesn't have anything going on to it, but inside of its script, we can do crazy stuff. So we're going to tell inside of you, can you like draw out, out can you draw out a path? Okay. So what does that mean? Uh, well, we can make an, we can have an array of a bunch of points. So point, uh, oh, sorry, let me increase press size. We can just have an array of points and then we can do something with those points later, but let's just generate an array of points. How can we do that? What's our first variable or how can we start this off? So let's just start off with the ready function. If you don't know what to do, start off with a ready function. What are we trying to do? Well, I just said in over here that we're going to try calculating a path. Okay. How do we calculate a path? Um, well, let's make a function called calc calculate path. And what are we going to do in that function? So let's think about it. Uh, what are we going to do in this function? Let's think about it. Well, obviously I want for I in path length. Uh, whatever path length happens to be, I want to add to an array. Okay, so var path length, let's just call it 100 for now, because why not? Okay, path length. Okay, so I need a var path, var path, um, I'm just going to call it var path steps, because that's the like the, the steps that we're going to be taking. Uh, what steps are we going to be taking? Well, we can define our steps uh, already by calling by making an enum, which is basically a fancy way of saying a dictionary. Uh, basically, this is zero, one, two, three, but it's in human readable terms. So we can do something like dir's directions left, right? And this this is equivalent to saying zero and dir's dot right is equivalent to saying one, but instead of saying zero, one, two, three, we can just say left, right, up, down for human sake. Okay, so for I and path length, we're obviously going to want to add to path steps, right? Because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make a path, right? We're trying to make a path. So uh, we can just say path steps dot append um, step, uh, so what step we can make a variable called step, uh, what's step going to be, it's going to be a random number from zero, one, two, three, it's going to be a random number from zero, uh, two, three. So how can we do that in Godot? Well, we can just say random int, uh, random int modulus. It's not modulus percent sign. Uh, we can say random int percent sign, uh, it does dot size. What does this fancy line mean? Well, it means random integer. And if we just control click that it says random integer. And over here, it says, if you put a percent sign, it will give you a number from uh, zero to this number minus one. And there's dot size will return uh, the actual full size of that dictionary. And this size of this dictionary is four. So random integer mo uh, modulus four or not modulus, sorry, percent sign four will basically give us a random number from zero to three and zero to three is zero, one, two, three. So we had a random step. Okay. So we're adding a random step to our um, walker and uh, let's just do uh, oh, so how do we uh, print this path? So when we're done, just print path steps, I guess. Uh, path steps, please, not length. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. We're just going to be selecting the world, and we're going to select a world scene to run. And we can see right now we have a random set of directions, 0, 1, 2, whatever. Um, what does that mean? So let's see. Uh, 1. So it'll, our walker will move right. 
So 0, 1, 2, 3, right, and then it'll move up, and then it'll move down, then it'll move left. Okay, what do we do now? Well, we want to actually force and set tiles of the parent. So how do we do that? Uh, how do we how do we set tiles of the tile map? Uh, let's see. So walker unit is over here, tile map is over here. What we can do is if we want to, um, this is just one way to do it. Um, you don't have to do it like this. There's multiple ways to do it. I like to do it like this because this will help us later on. But I like to make a var variable called tile map up here in the walker head. Uh, just give it type tile map if you want to. And then function in the ready function, we can just say uh, get parent dot get node uh, tile map. Uh, sorry, tile map variable is going to be equal to get parent dot get node tile map. So this walker unit now has access. So if we do get parent on the on the walker unit, we can ask it to get the tile map, and we can just use a tile map variable. So this is this uh, for simplicity sake over here. Uh, oh wow, no, that's not what I want. But I want something like this. Tile map equals get parent dot tile map. We can basically say after we're done calculating a path, just um, tm dot set uh, cell. Uh, oh shit okay so what are we trying to set the like the location so what's the location that we're trying to set the cells of um well we can always start off with the parent's location right because that's where the the location is um we can just start it over here wherever we want but we need a point of reference to start placing tiles what, what am i trying to say well you see how this walker unit over here is on a tile let me just move it down one so it's easier to understand you see how it's on a tile if we get this global location and then we say okay set cell and then if we go over here to our output and we can see that this one was to move up or left or right or whatever, let's just say, I remember two was up, right? So if, if we say we're going to move up, we're just going to move up one and then we're going to set a cell and then we're going to move down. So three was down and then zero was left and then one was uh, right. So it, like this and then up, up uh, and then that was left. Or, or you get the idea that we're just trying to place cells based on what was given in this array. So let's go do that. Um, da, 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 snake. Uh, okay. So we're going back to our walker unit, and our walker unit is actually placing the cells. So uh, it had, needs a location. Or we talked about where we're getting where we are getting the location from. The location is going to be our location, I guess, is going to be equal to get parent dot global position, right? And uh, uh, get global position it is going to be a vector two, of course. Um, and uh, so, what? Where? Where are we getting this? Um, where, how are we going to modify the location? Oh, of course, we're going to be looking at our path steps. So we need to do something like uh, for uh, directions, uh, for directions in path steps, right? Uh, what are we going to say? Well, we're going to say, well, we need a, um, we need to kind of modify the location, right? Uh, that's what we need to do. Uh, how do we modify the location? Well, let's think about it. The location. Oh, yeah, this location. We're trying to modify it. So, and we have left, right, up, down. And if we just print out dir real quick, uh, right? Uh, this is the only print statement. So if we just print out dir, we're just going to get a list of our, or we're going to get a, like a an output of our direction. So we can just say match. Uh, match is a, a fancy way of doing if statements. Match dir. And we're going to match. What are we going to match dir to? We're going to match it to one. We're going to match it to two. Um, we're going to match it to one. We're going to match it to two. I'm going to match it to three. Uh, what, what am I doing? This looks alien. If this looks alien to you, don't worry, I'll explain it. Match is basically saying, okay, take dir and then match it to zero, one, two. If it's if, if dir is zero, print print left, right? Zero is left. Remember that? Uh, and I'm just going to go through all of these real quick. And as you can see over here, when, I, when we set up our match statement like this and we click run, we get a bunch of directions for us to go to. Okay, so we get a bunch of directions. That's fancy. Uh, that's all cool. What can we do with the directions? Let's think about it. Uh, what can we do with the directions? Well, we can modify our location, right? How do we can modify? How do we modify our location? Oh yeah, we have um, our. We have instead of saying left, let's just make a a variable over here called um, var modifier direction. Modifier direction. That's the amount we're going to modify by. Uh, vector two, and we can just say modifier direction is going to be equal to vector two dot left and then we can do something similar for all of these as well just change it to down if you don't change it um then you're going to see an obvious issue with your program it might be hard to spot but commonly when people copy paste stuff it's usually they don't change that value and it causes a whole lot of problems and headaches later okay so we have our directions are being modified here but if you think about it where we actually want to just modify the location or actually, no, uh, we have our modifier direction here. But the issue is if we did something like location uh, plus equals uh, modifier direction, and then we set to tile, we said we told the tile map set cell. Um, what, what's the X and Y? 
uh, well, the X and Y is actually going to be in, if we go over here to control click set cell, it's going to be an X and Y of the tile map units. So we actually have to convert our, uh, look, um, our vector to so var uh, map, uh, map, chords, I guess, map chords, you just make a, a variable, uh, it's going to be called uh, tile map dot world. No, it's going to be more yeah, world to map. So we're converting a world position to a map position. And we're just going to convert location. And we're going to do map chords dot x map chords dot y, and then set cell. So basically, what we're saying over here is set a cell of this x and y uh, to zero, right? And if we run, uh, we see it's a null. Uh, why is it null? Um, the reason it's null is because uh, this tile map variable is not initialized yet. If you go over here, uh, it's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, you can see it's null. Uh, why is it null? Because Godot actually builds trees. Uh, so it, what happens is it initializes stuff from top to bottom, obviously, but it fixes the bottom one and then it runs its code and then the one above it gets run. This one hasn't been run yet. Only Walker unit has been run and we don't have tile map on Walker unit. If you know that this is how your tree is going to be set up, there's nothing wrong with making a variable called tile map here, tile map, and basically saying it's going to be called tile map. And then there's nothing wrong with doing tile map equal to get parent dot get parent uh, dot uh, uh, dot get node uh, get node node tile map. There's nothing wrong with doing this, right? But we, we kind of don't want that. We kind of want our things to be interdependent or kind of independent of each other. So what can we do instead? Well, what we can do is in our walker head, we can say uh, when this is ready, when walker head is like fully initialized and uh, ready in the ready function in the ready uh, signal, right, which is essentially the ready function over here, we can basically tell our walker unit to calculate a path then instead of telling the walker unit to make it when it's uh, ready. So that's a bit of a, a Godot, uh, like a deeper Godot trick. If you don't understand it, just know that um, some objects in our game world weren't ready to generate uh, a map yet, or uh, some objects in our game world weren't ready. One of them was being the tile map, which we were getting from our parent. But if we get rid of it in the ready function and instead place this, uh, place uh, the method being called, so we're actually running the code that we're, we were just typing out, this method that we were making, if we place its um, start, after we get this variable, everything should work out. And as you can see over here that we get some tile set, but what's what's the issue? Why is it small? It's because we have a tile size of 16 and we're just adding vector two dot down, which is uh, basically, which is essentially saying vector two zero um, one, right? And we're talking in terms of global coordinates here. So what we have to do is modify direction times tile size. Size, tile size. Okay, what's tile size? Um, well, we can just make it a constant tile size. In this case, for our project, or at least the project I'm making right now, is 16. So let's run that world. And as you can see, we get a bit of a map. Okay, but I want to restart the scene. Um, so I'm just going to make a really crude function real quick about if event dot is action pressed r get tree dot reload current scene. Um, what's r project setting input map r r um, a key r Okay, and if we just do that real quick, you can see that uh, nothing changes. Why? Because we have not randomized our our like random generation thing each time. And as you can see, we get random walker. Why did I emphasize on making this its own object? Well, imagine if we duplicated this a bunch of times, and instead of calling it once over here in walker unit, we just said for child in um, get children, uh, get children, get children. Uh, for child and get children. Remember, we're looking at Walker head right now. And if we said get children, we would get an array of all of these guys and uh, Walker units. So what can we tell each child to do? Well, we can call this function on each child, which is calculate path. Um, if you want to, if you're going to be adding other things to Walker head for whatever reason, you can do if child dot, if child dot has method, if it has the method calculate path, if it has the method calculate path, then child dot calculate path. And if we run it, you see that we get insane little maps. Like th this is actually a fun map. Like that one previous, this one over here with like has a turn that in interesting player decisions. Maybe if you use some sort of like seek for the most, the like the most top left or the top right uh, uh, segment of your map, you can place some loot or treasure there. Like over here, top, bottom right, it's easy to calculate where the bottom right is. Just um, 
I'll show I'll show that later. You can find out the bottom left, bottom right of each uh, side, and then you can place something there if you want. It's not that hard to figure out yourself. Like this is randomized, and these are actually pretty okay. Like I wouldn't mind playing in any one of these maps. And the best part about using the random walker that we generated here is that each point is always going to be connected. Theoretically speaking, every from any point you can always get to the other point because we're only moving in cardinal directions. Um, let me just Google cardinal directions real quick. Cardinal directions. We're only moving up, down, left, right, right? What does that mean? That well, that means we'll never have this. We'll never have a situation where, uh, where there's one room and there's another room here and we can never cross because we're not, we're never moving diagonally. We're only ever going to be moving up, down, left, right. So we will always be generating systems or uh, rooms where we can always get from point A to point B. And Speaking of point A to point B, I just realized that if you wanted to, you could put a navigation system on this by clicking over here and then doing navigation and then doing this. Wow, that opens up a lot of possibilities, which I did not realize when I was making the first tutorial, but that's totally fine. And um, I guess you could expand on this. But so now that we have the basic system set up over here um, where we can generate rooms and stuff, I'm going to be expanding on it in a... I'm going to be expanding on it in a more theoretical sense and not actually coding it out because I just want to give the basics to the world, right? This is the basics. And then this second project that I have over here is like the more advanced version, which I worked on uh, myself. And uh, basically that's uh, what I'm going to be talking about now. So over here, you can see that we have a bunch of more variables, right? Uh, we can do a system where if each walker has a chance to give birth to another one, like create another one, or if it can die by itself, or if it has a chance to walk straight, amount to walk straight for. So what does amount to walk straight for looks like? So if there's a random float, which is a value from zero to one, right? Zero to one. So like we could have 0 0.001 or 0 0.05, 0 0.6, whatever. Um, if it's less than chance to walk straight, which is 0 0.01. And if it is a straight walker, uh, then we could just say walk straight for, just add a certain amount of, uh, so for over here for V, I did uh, is the same thing as our step. So just add a random amount of uh, so for however for however for however long we're going to be walking straight for, just add that a bunch of times, right? And if I do, um, if I just quickly go over here and do the chance to walk straight as one, you can see over here that we have a lot more corridors, right? That if you want a more corridor world, let me just convert this back to something with higher contrast. Um, if we had a if you wanted corridors, oh yeah, go ahead, increase that value increase this chance to walk straight for and by the way this project will be in the description if you want to play around with it amount to walk straight for you can play around with if you increase the birth chance and by the way birth chance what's birth chance um well so if a random float again we're just using the same idea which is if a random zero if a random decimal is less than a, a value that we've already set then we can just do something and uh, uh same idea for dying well we just emit signal and die um emit, sig emit signal done moving and die the signal comes in handy later on. I'll talk about that. We can also randomize stats, all right? I'm not going over anything novel or new. I'm just um, stating things that you could easily work out if you gave it a little bit of thought because I didn't really do anything new here. I just um, took a, like a couple of seconds to think about things and I, you know, put it together in a tutorial format. But I will be going over the the other ideas or I guess I'll be coding out the other ideas later on, but I'm just showcasing what is possible. Right now in this project, uh, the nuclear tone map generation live, the one that I'm working out on camera is we've, we have something so far. Okay. And if I wanted to, if I wanted to, we could, we could convert that into white tiles instead. So it looks a bit better. What we're going to be doing in the next tutorial is placing a giant box around the map. This is the code that we're going to be using. Uh, if you could figure it out what this means and go ahead you can implement it but what i'm basically going to be doing is placing a giant box around a black box around the uh the the rest of the the space so the player can't really walk out so white would be where you can walk and black is where you cannot walk um that will happen in the next tutorial because this tutorial is already pretty long um i'll be leaving both my live and the pre-made version on github so you can play it around with it but i'm just gonna right here uh -huh. generate black box around yeah. and that does it for this part of the tutorial have a amazing day hopefully you come back for the second part bye